All right, welcome to the channel. So today we're talking about belly mods, specifically on the Bearhawk Model 5. Why we did it, what it does, and all the above. Okay, so there's a couple reasons for the belly pod, but obviously the bear hawk is not lacking in space. Actually, this floor right here from the back of those seats is over six feet long. So we're not lacking in space, um, but we're gonna go through why we ended up putting a belly pod on this airplane. Okay, so the reason for doing a belly pod on this is not because the bear hawk doesn't have enough space like I just showed you. There's plenty of space in the back of that airplane, but when we're talking about an airplane that can carry 14 to 1500 pounds, depending on how you build it, um, what you run out of is CG, which is center of gravity for those that don't fly. So as you add weight in the back, the center of lift, where the airplane balances from, basically starts to move back. And the airplane has a limit to how far back that can be and how far forward that could be. So the goal is in this airplane to build the airplane to where when you have one pilot, a little bit of fuel, the airplane is actually slightly out of the forward CG. And the reason for that is because you're always going to have something with you. You're going to have oil, you're going to have tools, you're going to have all of that. And by having the CG as far forward as you can be empty, it lets you actually use the useful load of the airplane. So, you know, when you're a single pilot um, flying along here with a little bit of fuel, you may take that 25, 30 pound toolkit that's normally in the belly pod, throw it all the way back here in the back of the baggage compartment, and then your CG is right where it needs to be. Um, and so that's where we want it to be building wise, but the purpose for doing the belly pod, there's a couple reasons. First one is, this is a six place airplane. So by the time you throw six people in here, you got people all the way in this back row, your CG is already approaching that aft limit. And then let's say, okay, you have that 20 or 30 pound toolkit with you. Plus let's say each person has a 10 pound backpack with them. Um, now you've got another hundred pounds of stuff that have to go all the way back here and the distance from behind the back seat to the uh, where the CG is supposed to be on this airplane is actually really big. So, hence the belly pod. So what we have the ability to do is put six people in here and then throw all their bags underneath. And in this belly pod, you can actually throw weight in front of the CG rather than right on it or behind it. And so what that lets you do is actually move your CG forward a little bit and keep all of that extra weight on CG. The other side of this is um, I have a fuel bladder being built. And so there's gonna be a 40 gallon fuel bladder that goes right down here in the belly. And so that lets you carry 40 gallons of six pounds a gallon. So you're 240 pounds. There's no way you could carry that all the way in the back behind the seats. But what it lets you do is put it right underneath the airplane on a, on a CG in the belly pod. And then there's a transfer pump that runs it. And so even as you use that fuel, it does not affect your CG. All right, so on the front side of this airplane, um, you're gonna see some kind of air ducting and that kind of stuff. That has to do with the engine installation. We'll cover that later as I uh, show you guys what kind of motor we're running and all that kind of stuff. Um, but on the front side of this belly pod, you can see a few holes. And so as we come down, this is in flight attitude. So there's really not gonna be much hanging down into the wind on the front side of this. And then as we move forward right here, you see two holes. Those are actually for landing lights. And so when this airplane's in three point on a set of 31s, those actually point almost straight forward. Um, and so those are going to be two big PAR 36 floodlights that are going to add to the uh, add to the landing light situation. Over here, you'll see the beginnings of the seals. So on the outside, there's a uh, basically a baffing, baffling material type rubber that is the outward seal. And then on the inside of this belly pod, um, you can see the hole that we're trying to fill in here. On the inside, there's a leather boot that seals as well. And so. This is really important because you do have some exhaust flowing down underneath here. The exhaust is a little bit different on this airplane, but there's still exhaust coming underneath there. So you need a real tight seal so you don't have CO problems. So this belly pod is a carbon composite layup. 
It's a combination of carbon fiber and a little bit of Kevlar built into it. And so as you can see, it's pretty large. It's actually from the front to the back is about eight and a half feet. We have a front wall in here. The reason for having a wall in it is that just in front of that uh, is the gear legs on this. And so with a bear hawk, you have a different kind of gear leg, different than a cub. And I wanted the belly pod to continue forward and not have to start right behind those. And so as you go back, we have a, a staggered door on the back side of the other side. And you can see that it tapers up into the frame. And then right here, you have all my channels so flight control cables are covered in a carbon channel and then all my electrical is running that and so you don't have anything dangling down into here um, you don't have to worry about your bags getting into the flight controls and i did actually eliminate the belly fabric on the bottom of this airplane so as far as attaching this airplane is concerned uh, i'm going to show you how we attached it so basically there's 24 tabs on this airplane that this attaches to and so you can see all that down that side there's some tabs up at the upper upper edge um, and so those run all the way through in the back we have a few and then in front of this wall there's some pretty heavy duty ones as well and so scattered around the perimeter of this uh, belly pod is 24 tabs and so this thing is actually really really strong we're going to placard it for 300 pounds so for those of you that are gonna ask, no, you can't just go buy one of these. Um, I looked around, there are some producers that are making them uh, for Super Cubs and things like that. And I think you could make one work on a Bearhawk. Um, but in my scenario, I was trying to keep it as far forward. And I didn't want that abrupt drop that's in the majority of the production ones that basically just come up behind the gear legs. I'll show a picture of what I'm talking about. I was trying to eliminate a whole lot of drag by allowing it to come up over the gear legs. So we even close the gear legs um, and then we have a nice smooth taper out of the backside of the cowling and a nice smooth taper down the backside. And so how you build one of these is a one-off carbon mold. And so I'm gonna show you some pictures. Your best friend is Pink Panther foam and expanding foam and you just go to sanding. And so on a modification like this, it probably has cost me 250 hours. Um, between designing, welding tabs, sanding, pulling carbon, sanding, preparing for paint, all that kind of stuff. And so it is a big mod, it does take a while. Um, but in this scenario, uh, I think it will be worth it. So no, you can't go buy one. It is a lot of work, um, but in the, in the long run, I think it'll be a good, good choice for us. All right, so that's it on the belly pod. That's how I did it. I'm sure there's a few other ways to do it, but that's uh, what we have going on with ours. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I think we're going to be going over some bush wheels and uh, some avionics electrical here shortly. See ya.